The Automatic Material System from Bamboo Lab, or AMS, is the most reliable multi-material system I've used to date. We did a deep dive into this unit nearly two years ago, and since then it's had some firmware improvements that added features like the ability to tap into another spool when one runs out. There have been some minor internal revisions, but the AMS unit that's available today is near identical to the one that was released at launch. While it checks a lot of boxes, there is always room for improvement. This led to the development of Python, a community-made upgrade that uses the internals of the AMS, but replaces the external hardware and shell. This allows for things like wider spool compatibility, optional active heating, and the ability to bypass the gears to use abrasives. I finished the build a little over a week ago, and I've really been enjoying using Python with the X1 Carbon. In today's video, we'll dive into this upgrade, go over its features, what the build's like, and I'll give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thanks to Voxel PLA for sponsoring today's video. Used exclusively in a 150 machine print farm, they now offer 15 colors of PLA Plus and five colors of PETG Plus. Both are available at the low price of $16.99. This is an excellent choice for anyone needing reliable and affordable materials, even for more demanding applications. Filament performance is excellent even on high-speed printers. Bulk discounts are available along with free shipping in the US when you order three or more rolls. Voxel PLA also provides high-quality 3D printer upgrades, such as the Bento Box two-stage filter and the Bamboo Lab AMS Hydra, along with many others. Check out the link in the description to voxelpla.com to find out more about their high quality affordable filaments and printer upgrades. The Python upgrade was created by Humebean, the same person who designed the Vision Enclosure upgrade for the P1P. The development started late last year and it's undergone extensive testing with a few revisions since its full release. It's compatible with the X1 and P1 series of Bamboo Lab printers. Unlike the Hydra mod that stuck to using the shell of the AMS, Python only uses the internals and ditches the case, giving it much more freedom in design and functionality. Because of this, there are really two parts, the main Python unit and an optional enclosure. If you only want to print with materials that aren't very hygroscopic or just don't want the enclosure, you can skip it or decide to add it later on. If you do opt for the enclosure, there's plenty of space to store desiccant and the eight slots in it lets you mount up to four Polymaker dryers to it for active drying. This seems overkill to me, and the most I can see myself ever using at one time is two, but having the option is pretty cool. There's a printed bracket to help hold the heaters in place, but I strongly recommend using VHB in addition to prevent them from falling out. You can also install slot covers to fill these holes when they're not being used. Python is compatible with a huge range of spool types. Sample spools, cardboard, plastic, and a wider range of sizes work with it. Two spools that never worked with the AMS for me were protopastas when the unit was closed and Jesse filaments which now have no issues. The max width of compatible spools is extended to 80 millimeters wide and 210 millimeters for the diameter. It uses self-centering double helical gears with a 135 to 12 gear ratio to connect the drive gear with the spool gear to feed and unload filament. This tightens right up against the spool, which has worked well for me, but you can optionally use an M3 screw to secure to the spool as needed. Combined with PTFE load buttons, any of the spool slots can be used as external spools. This lets you run a secondary Bowden tube that bypasses the feeder gears for printing with abrasives that are not compatible with the AMS feeders. All spools are resting on 608 bearings, which is what allows this external function to work. It also takes load off of the feeder gears and AMS motor. For mounting, it can sit directly on top of the printer or there are optional holes underneath it that will let you mount it onto a wall. You don't lose the ability to daisy chain them with other AMS units if you have a hub, and there's no issue mixing and matching if you have a Python and a standard stock AMS. The only function you do lose is RFID support. The RFID boards require the filament to sit very close together, which wouldn't allow for the wide range of spool compatibility and sort of defeats the purpose. I personally don't really ever use this function and have no issue just entering in the filament I've loaded, but if this is something you're used to using and print almost exclusively with a lot of Bamboo Lab filament, then that's something that you'll have to consider. The footprint of a full four bay Python with filament installed and the front feeders is 439 millimeters wide, 
by 310 millimeters deep and 275 millimeters tall. With the enclosure, this expands to 460 by 390 by 293 millimeters. There's a bomb available for sourcing and building Python on the printables project page. Humebean also partnered with a few vendors like Voxel PLA on this project, so you can buy a hardware kit or a full printed parts kit. Voxel PLA provided a full printed parts and hardware kit for both the Python and the enclosure. This includes the required screws, bearings, PTFE, acrylic panels, and all printed parts in PETG for the entire thing. The heat inserts for the enclosure also came pre-installed in all of the printed parts. If you decide to self-source, the standard 4-bay Python takes approximately 1.8 kilograms of filament, and if you decide to go for the enclosure, you'll need an additional 1 kilogram, so it is a print-heavy upgrade. Most materials will work fine for printing out these parts as long as you scale for shrinkage accordingly, but PLA is not recommended because even if you don't have an active dryer and you have this just sitting on top of the machine, the heat rising up from it will likely cause those parts to deform. I had some initial concerns with these parts being printed out of PETG, especially with those heaters, but Voxel PLA let me know that they've been testing this with two active heaters running at the maximum heat and that the internal temperature only ever reached approximately 60 Celsius. If you plan on running four and are printing with a lot of higher temp materials like nylon, then I would probably opt for printing out the parts in something like ABS or ASA. In addition to the printed parts and the hardware, of course you will need a standard AMS unit that you can harvest the internals from. This is the first part of the build. There's a link to Bamboo Lab's official wiki on replacing the AMS mainframe on the project page. For the most part, this was relatively straightforward. The hardest part was removing the RFID boards, but if you remember earlier, I mentioned Python is not compatible with RFID. This was my fault and I was so focused on following the guide that I didn't actually realize it until after I'd already removed them. So save yourself the headache and just leave them in that original shell. There's a fairly step-by-step -step guide for the assembly process on the printables page with pictures to follow along. Because of this, I won't go step-by-step -step through the assembly process, but I will cover the mistakes I made and some of the more difficult things I ran into in hopes that it'll help others to avoid those same hurdles. One of the things you need to do early on is remove the rubber sleeving on one side of the front rollers. I don't know how I didn't see this, but I ended up removing the cover from the wrong side of the rollers. I very likely could have just used some glue to reinstall them, but I happened to have an extra set of rollers, so I just swapped them out for a different set, but just make sure that you are removing that rubber sleeving from the correct side of those rollers. I also managed to install the controller for the AMS into the printed part in the wrong orientation. This was a really simple fix, but just make sure that you're double checking the images to make sure that you have all of the parts oriented in the correct direction. The main Python build just uses M3 screws that create their own threads into the plastic pieces. I didn't have any issues with installing any of the screws into the printed parts, but just remember to not over tighten them to avoid accidentally cracking them. If you opt to install the PTFE buttons, which I highly recommend, there's a section lower down on the feeder that you can press with one hand that makes installing them much easier. I originally just tried pulling them back and sliding on the printed part, but it was a struggle. Having one hand clear by pressing the button further down is a far better way. When it came time to install all the cables to the controller, I had a difficult time fitting my hand in between the printed parts to install the side ones. I highly recommend using a decent set of tweezers to help you get those small cables installed into that controller. Most of the screws were easy to install, but the ones on the underside of the unit that connect each filament module together were difficult to reach. There's one higher up that I was able to use a standard driver with, but the lower ones required lots of twisting with a small Allen key. After installing, I'm not actually convinced that both the higher and the lower one are needed, so if I were to build this again, I would just install the easier to reach screws. This will also make disassembly of this unit if you ever need to a whole lot easier. Other than a couple of self-inflicted mistakes, the Python build was a pretty enjoyable one. This is largely thanks to the guide and minimal use of different sized hardware. If you plan on building the enclosure, my recommendation is once you're done with the main unit to hook it all back up to your printer, load a filament spool into each slot to make sure that it's feeding and unloading correctly, and then just run a small print to make sure that all the things are operational before then putting it inside of the enclosure. Once I confirmed this, I moved on to building the enclosure. This had a lot less printed parts or just a lot less parts in general than the main Python build, but I did run into a few complications. 
The base is made up of four larger parts that dovetail into each other and are then secured with M3 screws. While I was able to get them all started with my driver, once I got them partially in, due to the angle, they started slipping on me, so I had to use a small Allen key once again to finish tightening all those screws, which was just a bit of a tedious process. After assembling the base, an acrylic panel gets secured on the bottom and the four sides are slid into place. While they look symmetrical, they are not. And my recommendation is once you slide them in, if you notice any of the holes aren't lined up, flip the panel around and the likelihood is you just have it in the wrong orientation. The main issue I ran into with this enclosure was installing the small internal lip that the top panel rests on. It's made up of four thin pieces that need to be perfectly aligned with the outer main housing. For quite a few of them, there was some filament blocking the threaded opening of the heated insert, which made it impossible for me to actually get the screws installed through them. I ended up driving an M3 screw through each of them to clear those holes and then just use a flush cutter to sort of clear away some of that excess filament. I also found that the tolerances on these were very tight, which made getting everything aligned just really tricky. I shared this feedback with Voxel PLA and they let me know that they will be manually clearing all of those heated inserts moving forward and that they're working with the designer to enlarge those holes a bit so that way when the heat inserts are driven into the printed parts it should prevent any of that filament from sort of blocking the pathway that the screw needs to go into. Getting the python into the enclosure is a tight fit but it doesn't require any disassembly. There's enough flex in the center of the enclosure that with a little bit of effort, you can get it to just sort of push in and then it pops right into place. There's holes in the enclosure that are used to secure the sides of the python to it with a couple of screws, which will lock it into place and prevent it from being able to move around. The back has a handful of threaded openings in it that are used for passing the AMS cable through and PTFE tubes. I only have two PTFE tubes coming off of it, one for the main AMS unit and one for the slot that I set up as an external spool. But if you optionally decide to set up all spools to be used as also external spools, then you might have up to five Bowden tubes coming off of the back of the Python unit. The enclosure sits nicely on top of the printer, but there's 40 millimeters sticking off of each side if you have it perfectly centered. So what are my thoughts on the Python so far? Well, I really like it. The feeding has worked really well and the ability to use just about any spool of filament that I have is definitely a massive plus. As someone that does print with a fair bit of abrasives, I also found it always really annoying that I had to grab an external spool or use the little metal mounted spool on the back of the printer every time I wanted to print with one. Combined with the PTFE buttons, being able to just use the same unit and bypass those feeder gears is really nice. While I think the enclosure is a nice option to have, I definitely don't think it's gonna be a requirement for everybody. I primarily use my X1 Carbon to print with PLA, ABS, and ASA, and I haven't really ever had a moisture issue, so for me, the primary benefit of having it in enclosure is really just to keep dust off of it. But as someone that has just about all their filament wide open on a shelf, dust hasn't been a huge concern for me. Having the optional dryers will be great when I do a fair bit of printing with something like say PETG, and I definitely think having all of the added space, I will print out some containers that'll add desiccant to just to have those inside of the enclosure. Since I only ever see myself needing to use two dryers at a time and I'll be installing those on the backside, my plan is to cut out a new panel that doesn't have these slot openings and probably even doing some kind of a custom engraving on it. I'm also very tempted to tap into the power of the AMS to run some LEDs inside of this. Having this sort of open acrylic paneled enclosure feels like it's just asking to have a bit of additional light. I highly recommend taking a further look at this project and seeing if it makes sense for your setup. It might not be necessary for everyone, but if you use a wide variety of spools and have had any issues with loading or unloading, then this might be just the upgrade for you. The creators also tease that there's a three kilogram version being worked on, which is something I'm personally really interested in. While I don't have a ton of large spools, I have a few really big two and a half kilogram ones on the shelf that I would love to use. So even if I can somehow set up a singular bay that's compatible with those big spools, it would be a huge plus. Links will be in the description for anyone that wants to find out more or get parts for this upgrade. Voxel PLA also let me know they're running a $10 off promotion for all three hardware kits through Sunday, so I'll have that linked in the description for anyone that's interested. And that's been Python. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions you maybe had about this upgrade. If you do have any additional ones, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer. And if I don't know the answer to those questions, I can try to reach out to the developer of this to get those answers for you. 
On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.